Hey guys, this is Sdipity Aaron and welcome back to ating basic C++ tutorial. So we are at part 8 and today we are going to talk about for loops. So last time, pinag-aralan natin yung while and do while loops. So ayan, without further ado, let's get into the tutorial flow. So for today, we are just going to learn about the for loop syntax and then lastly, we are going to iterate through an array. So ano nga ba yung iterate? So, iterate is, babasahin natin isa-isa lahat ng elements sa loob ng array. So, ganun yung gagawin natin mamaya. Using for loop syntax, of course. So, ayan. Tingnan natin ngayon kung ano yung for loop. Ano nga ba yung for loop? So, for loops, it allows a program to do something repeatedly while a condition is met. So, parehong-pareho sila ni while and do while loop. But, ang pinagkaiba nila is yung syntax. So, malaki yung pinagkaiba nila sa syntax. So, let's go on sa syntax ng for loops natin. So, here we have the for loop syntax. So, we have the for keyword and then we have a parenthesis. Opening parenthesis and then we will initialize a variable here. So, kumari, int i is equal to 0 down here. And then, semicolon. And then, here is yung condition natin na gustong tingnan para magpatuloy yung for loop. So, katulad nga nito, int i is equal to 0. So, may i na tayo na 0. And then, titingnan natin if i is less than to 5. So, ayun yung condition. If i is less than to 5. Then, if so, meron tayong assignment na tinatawag. So, pwede natin dagdagan ng 2 yung i. Or kahit ano pa. So, eto, in this case, we have i++. So, naalala nyo pa ba ito? Ito yung sinasabing incrementation. So, magdadagdag tayo ng isa sa i. So, kumari, 0 tong i. So, if less than siya sa 5, then dadagdagin natin yung i. Okay? Gets nyo ba? And then, sa susunod doon is closing parenthesis and then curly braces. And then, sa loob ng curly braces na yun, meron tayong command. So, yun na yung code natin. Then, closing curly braces. So, ayun na yung ating for loop syntax. So, in this case, we see out yung i natin na variable na initialize here. We will go to code locks para mas maitindahan natin yung for loop na to. So, okay, guys, we are here at Code Blocks. We will make a simple um, program para makita nyo kung ano ba yung for loop talaga. So, type natin yung syntax for, and then, ano kailangan? Mag-initialize tayo ng variable. int i is equal to 0. So, hindi siya kailangan laging i, guys. So, declaration lang to ng variable. So, pwedeng x, pwedeng c, kahit ano pa yan. So, I lang yung ginagamit for uniformity. So, nakasanayan niya ng mga programmers. So, ayan. And then, nilalagay tayo ng semicolon. Tapos, susunod natin is condition, di ba? So, if I is less than to 10. Pwede yan. Then, semicolon ulit. And then, yung assignment natin. So, dadagdagan natin yung isa ng I. Ng isa, yung I. I plus plus. So, dadagdagan natin yung I ng isa. And then, we will see out yung I lang natin. So guys, para maintindihan nyo, for int i is equal to 0, so my i is equal to 0 na tayo, titignan niya kung less than 10 yung i. If so, ipiprint muna natin bago natin dagdagan. So ayan, let's run this program para maintindihan natin yung nangyari. So run this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So nag-loop siya na nag-loop hanggat less than to 10 pa yung i natin. So, nung umabot na ng 10, hindi na kasi siya less than to 10. Equals to 10 na siya. So, if we put um, less than or equal here, isasama niya yung 10. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Kasi yung 10 is equals to 10 pa rin. So, pasok pa rin siya dun sa criteria ng ating condition na i is less than or equals to 10. Gets nyo ba? So, ayan. So, parang do while loop and while loop ka na siya. So, ano ba ang kinaganda ng ating for loop? So, kung naalala nyo pa yung array, hindi na tayo sa second part ng ating agenda, we will make an array na pwede iterate through for loop. So, we will declare an array. So, pwede nyang yung for loop, using a for loop, pwede nating i-print lahat ng nandun sa loob ng array. So, pwede natin siyang basahin lahat. So, kung naalala nyo pa kung paano mag-initialize ng array, we will make an array string folds. And then, ayan, square braces, square brackets, equals yung mga phone natin. So, curly braces, and then sa loob niya, phone natin, um, iPhone, um, Samsung, hindi pala iPhone, I'm so sorry, Apple, 
and then we will make a Vivo, Oppo, Samsung, Samsung. Okay, hindi ko po favorite yung Samsung, Asus. So, ayan, Asus. Wala akong maisip. Then, we will proceed to do this. So, guys, alam natin for a fact na 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 yung haba ng ating array. So, may limang element. So, we could just change this to 5. But, paano kung dynamic yung ating array? So, pwede siya nang dagdagan or ganyan, ganyan. So, paano natin bibilangin kung gano'ng kahaba yung array na yun? So, we will declare an int. So, kahit anong pangalan. So, akin sz is equals to size of, tapos parenthesis, bones. Divided by size of bones. Square braces, zero. Sir, square brackets. I'm so sorry. Zero. Then, ayan. So, makikita nyo, ang ginagawa na itong part na to is binibilang niya yung laman ng ating array. So, i-comment muna natin lahat to. This is what we call a multi-line comment. So, slash and then asterisk, tapos asterisk, then slash again. So, dulo naman yung ano. So, hindi na to kasama. So, comment na lang siya. So, para makita natin kung ano yung ginagawa nung int sz na to. So, it's out natin yung sz. Okay, guys. If you run this, makikita nyo kung ilan yung laman ng ating array. So, ito lumabas 5. So, bilangin nga natin yung array natin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so may limang elements dun sa loob ng array natin. So, tama yung nilabas niya. What if dinagdagan natin ng isa pa? Um, ano pa ba ang brand ng cellphone? Wala na akong maisip. Um, my post. <laughs> Then, run. Nakikita nyo, 6 na siya. So, ayan. Tama naman, di ba? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, ayan yung ginagawa ng ating size of function. So, ganyan tayo kumuha ng size ng array. So, whenever kailangan nyo kunin kung gano'ng kalaki yung array, ngayon yung gagamitin nyo. Okay? So, let's delete this. Tanggalin na natin yung multi-line comment. So, guys, um, let's rewrite this for loop. So, again, delete natin ba so, paano nga ba natin i-iterate yung ating array dun sa loob ng for loop para makita natin lahat ng laman ng ating array. So, again, we will type for int i is equal to zero, declaration, and then if i is less than yung size. So, titingnan niya yung kung yung i is less than dun sa laki ng ating array, and then datagdagan natin yung i, so i++. plus plus And then, curly braces, enter, enter, enter. Ayan, sa gitna nyan, we will see out yung laman ng phone. So, paano natin mag-access ng array na alam niyo pa mag-access ng array? Phones, tapos yung square bracket sa loob nyan yung index, which is, in our case, is i. And then, less than, less than, then end line para nasa new line na siya. So, guys, pa paan ba't nga ba phones tapos i yung nakalagay dito sa loob? So, let's analyze so, nag-declare tayo ng int i is equal to 0, right? And then, tinitingnan nung condition natin if yung i is less than sa size ng phones natin. ba? We will add 1 to i kung yung i is less than the size. So, ibig sabihin, yung i sa una is 0. So, yung phones, 0 is yung apple. So, ipiprint niya yan. And then, iikot uli siya. So, yung int i is equal to 1 na yun. So, 1 na yung i natin. So, yung i ba is less than to size pa rin ng phones? Oo. So, ipiprint uli natin yung phones i. So, in this case, phones 1 na yan. So, yung Samsung naman. And then, dadagdagan uli siya natin ng isa pa. So, yung i dito is 2 na. Okay? And so on and so forth. Hanggang mapunta tayo dun sa dulo ng element ng array natin. So, let's run this para makita nyo yung result. If you run this, ayan na. Lumabas lahat ng ating laman sa array. So, Apple, Samsung, Vivo, Oppo, Asus, my phone. So, lumabas lang lahat siya. So, guys, ayun yung ating purpose for for loop. Marami pa tayong purpose dyan, but we will leave that in another video, guys. So, ito yung pinakasimpleng purpose ng ating for loop. So, meron pang tinatawag na nested for loops, but mas complicated na yun. We will leave that in another video para hindi humaba masyado tong video na to. So, yun lang, guys. I hope you understand something about the for loops. Then, pag-experimentohan nyo lang kung ano yung pwede nyo gawin sa for loops nito. So, pwede nyo 
i-compare kung kunwari meron kayong list ng mga password, list din ng username, iting iterate niyo yun tapos titingnan niyo yung in-input ni user kung tama kung nag-exist siya dun sa array niyo. Then ayun. Suggestion ko lang yun. So if you want to learn about so yung logic yung kukunin niyo again guys, yung logic lagi kukunin niyo and then apply it on your program. So guys, ayun lang. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. And as always guys, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.